Good afternoon, everyone. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Saturday, October 7th, 1139 AM Mountain Time, 2017. Giving you a space weather update. More importantly, a run by on a new paper out on the sun came out this year in March. Georgieva, Klitschik, Nagovitsyan, and Kirov. The ratio between the number of sunspots and the number of sunspot groups. If you guys watched uh, Ben Davidson's update, Suspicious Observer, two days ago, he talked about this paper. There's a link to it. I'll leave a link down in the description. But I want to, in layman's terms, go through this paper and tell you what the implications are for the grand solar minimum moving forward as far as we're concerned. Some of the headlines coming out are that the northern lights will dwindle in 2019, and I even saw today, now is your best chance to see the northern lights for almost a decade. What they're basing this information on is the fact that in solar minimum, what has been believed up until now by scientists is that sunspots dwindle. The number of sunspots dwindle. And when we look at the sunspot cycle chart during solar maximum, the number of sunspots increases. And as we go into solar minimum, the number of sunspots per solar cycle decreases. But what they're finding, according to this paper, is pretty startling. And what it's saying is that this may not be true, that in solar minimum, geomagnetic activity may not dwindle. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Okay, so what they studied was the ratio of sunspot numbers per sunspot groups. And they found that during solar maximum, as you go towards solar maximum, the number of sunspots per large sunspot groups increases, and you have these large geomagnetic events. Here's the Carrington event back here in 1859. We had X-flare events up here in the uh, 1990s. But now we've had an X-flare event recently as we're descending into the grand solar minimum. And it's confusing some people, but not ac according to the authors. Because what they conclude is pretty simple. That what's happening here, so what they did is they looked at the most recent sunspot data, and they found that the total number of sunspots during sunspot maximum and in a broad interval around it is strongly dominated by the sunspots in large groups. And the ratio between the average number of sunspots per sunspot groups is dominated by this particular ratio in large groups. The inverse relationship is happening during minimum. Okay, they can expect, and what they conclude is that they, we can expect that small sunspot groups Magnetic fields have long-term variations matching the long-term variation in small sunspots, and the varying magnetic fields would lead to varying numbers of sunspots in a group. With increasing portion of so small sunspot groups and a decreasing number of large. So what we're going to see is what this sentence says moving into the grand solar minimum, an increasing portion of small sunspot groups while the large sunspot groups decrease. So we are going to have more small sunspot groups delivering more powerful flares than we had originally expected, according to this paper. So what that means is that northern lights are going to be maybe less frequent, but more intense. Or they could be just as frequent. See, because we don't really have data. We won't know until we know. But what they're finding in these last few cycles as we decrease in solar activity, the number of small sunspot groups is increasing as the number of large sunspot groups are decreasing. So there is going to be geomagnetic activity down here. And as our shields fail, that's bad news for the grid, folks. Very bad news. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the description box down below here. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, Please do so now. Guys, be safe.